Good morning, Junior Classical League friends. I hope you're having a wonderful convention. I am here to present about Roman games. Unfortunately, I've had a family emergency that I need to deal with, and I can't be with you in person, so I've made you this video, and I hope that if you have questions later, you'll contact me. This presentation is called Game Like a Roman. So this lesson is from a class I developed and teach called Roman Technology. In it, we study the ancient Roman world through the lens of STEM. And each lesson is a hands-on lab in which we recreate the daily life of ancient Romans through experimental archeology. span um, This lesson is about the technology of ancient Roman gaming. So one of the questions I always ask my students is who played games? The answer to that is, of course, children who had time to play games, soldiers, whom you see here in this picture of a fresco from Pompeii, adults after dinner, and looking a little bit more closely at um, this video, this image, you will see that we've got two soldiers. Their dress tells us they are soldiers, and they are using a game board which you see propped up on their knees right here. You can see that this soldier is holding a dice cup, which was used to uh, shake dice before they were thrown. And you can even see some little pieces of the game here. So we also ask the question, or you should always ask the question to your Latin teacher, uh, how do you know these things about the ancient world? There are no Romans hanging around right now who can tell us this information. One of the ways we look at the ancient world is through the lens of literature. So this little passage comes from a man named Sidonius. He was a fifth century uh, Roman aristocrat living in ancient Gaul. And here's what he says about um, a visit to a rich king's house. From the moment we were hurried from one pleasure to another, hardly had we entered the vestibule of either house when we saw two opposed pairs of partners in the ball game repeating each other's movements as they turned in wheeling circles. In another place, we heard the rattle of dice boxes and the shouts of the contending players. In yet another were books in abundance ready to your hand. You might have imagined yourself among the shelves of some grammarian or the tears of the Athenaeum or a bookseller's towering cases. I love that this writer equates going to a library with playing games, right? He talks about dice boxes and the shouts of contending players. Um, if you want to read more about Roman games from actual Romans, you might want to consult Ovid and Marshall. They were Roman poets who wrote a lot about um, humorous instances with games. So let's talk about um, some technology that we have from the ancient world about um, games. So this is a frittleus, and you may have never heard this word before. It's quite unusual. It's a dice box or a dice tower. Now, these are still made and used today in some gaming um, circumstances, but they're quite simple. They work, and you can look at this picture here, by inserting a die here at the top. The die bounces off and in um, a platform that you see here in the middle. You can't see this from the outside. And then it bounces again off of another um, platform here. And then last of all, this um, platform that you see here where it rolls on out and exits the box here. This uh, helped to prevent cheating because the Romans loved to cheat in their games, especially when they used dice. Um, archaeologists have found numerous examples of dice that have been weighted so that when they are thrown, they will always land on a particular number. This particular dice box was found in England near a Roman fort, probably belonged to a soldier. Here's the most famous fritillus of all. Uh, it is located in Germany where it is in a museum. It was found in, an, in a fort in Germany, but it mentions people from ancient people of Britain, the Picts. So we think this may have belonged to a soldier who would have been stationed in Britain at one time and then moved over to Germany. So the Latin on it says, Pictos Wictos, 
which you may know means the Picts have been conquered. We have a lovely, perfect passive participle here with Wictos. Hostis delata, the enemy has been destroyed. Another wonderful, perfect passive participle here with delata. Ludita securi. Uh, ludita, of course, you can see the TE here is a um, imperative plural. Play without worry. And then a lovely subjunctive we have here. Um, live happily as you use me. Okay, so the I love the dice box is talking to the player, right? One of the really cool things about this are these little bells here. I don't know if you can see them, but there's one here attached where um, the die would come out down the stairs and um, exit the dice box. Now, I have actually put one of these together myself, and I'm going to show you. So here is my version of this dice box, and I hope you can see it here. I'm going to unshare my screen here so that you can see this whole thing. All right, so here we go, y'all. This is my model of the Fritillus found in Germany. Okay, and I hope you can see the whole thing. Yep, little bells here, and I'm going to use it for you. Little bells. I have some dice here that we recreated uh, in a Roman style. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and put them into the dice box. All right, here we go. Okay, and you can see that they were very well mixed up. Okay, makes this lovely sound when they come out. I'll do it one more time for you. <laughs> I just love this thing. And evidently, others have been found like this, but they are quite rare. The only two real Roman ones we have are in museums. The one I showed you in the earlier picture that was found in at the um, fort in Kent is was put back together. It was found in pieces. So I just think it's so cool. Okay, I'll go back to my presentation now. <laughs> I just really nerd out about these um, these dice boxes. Okay, so back to what we were talking about. So dice in general. Um, lots of Roman dice are found by archaeologists uh, all over the Roman world. They were made of bone or ivory, and the pips, which are the circles in the dice to give them their numbers, were carved or drilled. And unlike ancient dice that, that we have today, okay, um, dice that we have today, ancient dice were not always a uniform size, which is kind of strange to us, but you'll see dice in all uh, sizes and shapes. Sometimes we find um, game boards like you see here carved into a pavement of a public space in an ancient Roman city. This particular game board is the one that we'll be reproducing today at the end of our session. It's a Roman game called Rota, very similar to tic-tac-toe. Another Roman game that was very popular was called Trigon, and this was a ball game that um, had three players, as you see here in this fresco. They stood in a triangle and tossed a hard ball, probably made of leather and stuffed with some type of um, hard material, to the next player who had to catch it. Supposedly, one player had um, one famous player had a had a ball that he would use for this game that was made of glass because, of course, supposedly it was so good that he never you know he would never drop it. Hmm, I find that a little crazy. Um, the last thing I'll talk about with y'all real quick are knuckle bones. So these were um, taken from sheep, and as you probably know, the Romans used sheep um, in their daily lives all the time. Most of their clothing was made of wool which come from sheep. And so this part of the sheep, which is like his little um, back leg bone here, about midway down on his leg, is what is the knuckle bone. And as you can see here from this little Roman statue, the girl is playing with knuckle bones, very similar to how um, you would see jacks and, and um, a ball being used today. And here are some 3D printed ones. Let's see what they look like. 
All right, so today, y'all, we are going to recreate this game called Rota or Wheel. As you may know, the word Rota is um, a wagon wheel in Latin. So here's what you'll need to make it. And I'll give you a moment to go and get these things if you need to. You'll need a piece of paper, um, a bowl, and this is just to trace a circle. So you don't have to have um, any kind of special bowl for this. Just make sure that your bowl fits on your paper. Okay. And then you'll need three pennies and three dimes. I use our nickels, uh, something that's just different colors. Okay, so I'm using a penny and a dime, but you can use a nickel. It doesn't really matter. You'll also need a straight edge of some kind, um, like a ruler. I'm just going to use a ruler, but you could use a book if you don't have a ruler. And then you'll need some type of uh, marker or pencil to create your design. I'm going to use a Sharpie. Um, if you want to cut this out later, you can use scissors to do that, but I'm not going to use scissors to do it. Um, you can if you want to. All right, so I'll give you a moment to do that. I'm going to unshare my screen now. And I'm going to tilt my camera a little different way so that you can see what I am doing. All right, so I've got my piece of paper here. And I'm going to put my bowl on top of it, kind of in the center. This is just a recycled piece of paper, by the way. I never use um, white paper anymore. I just recycle it. All right, so I'm going to take my marker. And if you don't feel secure in doing this with your marker, that's totally fine. You can use a pencil if you want to, and then come back over it with a marker later. All I'm going to do is make a circle. I'm going to remove my bowl and get it out of my way because I'm not going to need it again. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and draw my lines. For this, I am going to use a pencil because I may want to erase my centers again. All right, so um, I'm going to try to find the center of my circle, and I'm just really going to eyeball that, y'all. It does not need to be perfect. That's about right. And then I am going to draw a diameter line through that circle, uh, excuse me, through that center. <laughs> so from one end of the circle to the other is what we call a di diameter line. You probably know this if you have taken any kind of math or geometry before. Once I've done that, I'm going to do the exact same thing in the other direction, making these um, two diameters perpendicular to each other. So, for example, if a circle is 360 degrees, right, then each of these angles that we've created would be 90 degrees. I'm then going to split each of those 90 degree angles into two 45 degree angles. Oops. And then I'm going to do the same with the other two so that eventually I have eight equal 45 degree angle triangles or angles, I should say. Next, I'm going to use my whatever I, you choose. I'm going to use my penny and I'm going to trace a little circle in the very center of my circle. This is going to be my first position to move from. Now, if you want to be fancy, you can go ahead and erase the lines that are inside of that circle. That's up to you. It can be as neat as you want it to be. And then at this point, you might want to start going back over your lines with your Sharpie to make your game look really cool and very, you know, ancient Roman. But that's up to you. Then we're going to go ahead and put eight more of these all the way around on each intersection of a diameter line with the circumference of the circle. There we 
we go. That one's not too perfect, but again, it's okay. Okay, so you end up uh, with something looking kind of like this. Again, if you want to, you can go ahead and, you know, erase the center lines and then go back over with a Sharpie if you want it to look really nice. It's up to you how much effort you want to put into this. And eventually, you should end up with something that looks a lot like this. Now, I make these on my own little pieces of wood for my students. Actually, they make their own, and we play um, on these little boards. So eventually, yours should look something like this. And then here is how you play. I'm going to um, demonstrate for you, and I'm just going to play against myself. Okay, so I'm going to have my pennies versus my my um, dimes. So let's say Penny goes first. He goes to the center. The goal of this game is to get three of your pieces in a, in a row, in a line. And that line can either be through a diameter line anywhere on here or along the circumference of the circle. So again, if my Penny goes first, my dime might go here, then my penny might go here, my dime would then go here, oh, or maybe here, sorry, <laughs> if he's trying to, and then um, my penny might not see that he should block the dimes here and go here, and then the dime would go here and win. Now I'm going to play another short game to show you what something else, what another turnout might look like. So what if the dime goes first this time? It's here. Penny goes here. Dime goes here. Penny blocks the dime. Dime goes here. Penny goes here. Now the dime moves. So once everybody's got their pieces on the board and there is not a win yet, you begin moving your pieces around the board. You cannot jump pieces. So doing this kind of thing is a no-no. You can't do it. You can only move to spots adjacent to where you are. So in this situation, the dime then wins by moving into this position. But let's say he didn't see that and he moved here to block the pennies. Penny can then move here. Dime moves here, Penny moves here to win here. Or if he didn't see that, maybe he moves here, Dime moves here and wins the game here. And that's how you play Rota. It's super simple. The Romans would have used probably, maybe, glass pieces for their boards or even rocks. Okay, game board pieces have been found made of black and white glass for some games. Um, but as you saw, some of these game boards would have been located in public spaces where anyone could have played them at any time with whatever they had. So probably rocks would be you know, a really good guess on that. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to show you one more thing, and that is... I made this game board um, on... Google Jamboard so that I'm going to send this to your convention um, organizer and hopefully you can get access to it. So this is the way it works. This is what it looks like. And the yellow, you're going to click on the yellow sticky note, put your name in. My name is Natalie. And then the other player will put their name in here. And those name tags are the colors of the pieces that you can play with. So you can actually play this with someone, even though that person is not in the same physical room with you. Okay. You can share this with your teacher 
or your friends and play along with them. Yay, I won against David. <laughs> so this is another fun way to enjoy this game. I hope you've enjoyed this session and I'm sorry I couldn't be with y'all today in person, but uh, I wish you luck with your competitions and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your convention.